Good evening, Nevada. My name is Mayor Barker, and I'm here with our city administrator, Matt Martison. And the two of us have been talking for a couple weeks about doing a recap video about some of the highlights of 2018 and some of the carryover projects that are going over into 2019. And so we wanted to take a few minutes after our council meeting tonight and go through some of those items. And so for those of you that don't know Matt, he's been here, what, almost two years two now? Two years. And um, has been a real great asset to the community. He, he works really hard behind the scenes on a lot of these projects. So that's why I asked him to join me for this because he can talk about a lot of the details since he's in that, the detail part of the project. So um, one of the first things we'll talk about is um, what happened at the end of 2017, which was when we got the news in that, that November of 17, that DuPont was planning to restructure um, at the corporate level, and with that, um, they were going to be closing the Nevada cellulosic ethanol facility. And obviously, that's a very um, large deal for us here in Nevada, um, something that we were afraid was going to happen, and it did, so we had, had to respond to that. And so um, I'm going to ask Matt to tell us a little bit about, you know, what did that mean for the city, um, what, what happened through 2018, because it's something we worked on basically the whole year, and then where we are today. Yeah, Brett, there was a lot of time spent on... Uh... 2018 on the DuPont project. Uh, when we got the we got the news that they were going to close, it was relatively a, kind of a shocker to all of us. Uh, we learned uh, back in November of 17 that they were going to shut down operations, and from there we we went into a mode to, to try and figure out who would be in the market for a facility like this and who would be able to take care of it. Uh, you know, we had a really good uh, minimum assessment agreement with DuPont, and we knew that they were trying to search for a buyer as well. So. Uh, from there, we really partnered uh, with them in a lot of different ways and worked with the uh, NEDC, uh, Nevada Economic Development Council, and tried to work through that avenue to try and get it sold. And we were lucky and fortunate enough to get uh, Verbio uh, to, to take hold and, and purchase it in November of 2018. So a lot of time spent uh, this year on uh, trying to figure out how that will affect the city financially um, from a standpoint of, you know, there was a a minimum assessment agreement and we knew that would probably be going away at some point in time so uh, the time spent there was uh, was worthwhile and uh, very optimistic about this new company Verbio. I think uh, quite frankly they've uh, a German-based company uh, that's coming over to the United States and uh, a lot of progress uh, so far and they're very uh, very eager to get started in Nevada. And just for folks who don't know what is a minimum assessment agreement and kind of kind of what did that mean as far as how did it protect the city, I guess? Because a lot of folks said, you know, what's the impact of this mean for the city? And I think if, uh, they might not understand the safeguards that are in place with these projects that do occur. Sure, the minimum assessment agreement is a is established base, if you will, for the tax valuation that's it's based on your taxes. So uh, they had a $38 million minimum assessment agreement, which is what their taxes were based on. So from that minimum assessment agreement, we were able to calculate what our tax revenues would be uh, throughout the city and, and correct and actually the county as well uh, as we work towards long-term planning with with uh, what that tax revenue will look like the minimum assessment agreement really uh, established the 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 baseline if you will for the, the rebates that we were able to give them over the course of the years that they were here um, and it also uh, has a, has the end of life so I mean that would have ran out in 20 years and then it would have been taxed at uh, what the valuation is set by the county, but uh, protects us in a lot of different ways on our investment. You know, we had a, uh, about a three point eight million dollar investment to get utilities and and roads and water and, and you know utilities to that area. So that minimum assessment really protects us as we move forward to make sure that the tax revenues from that property will pay for all those expenses that we that we initially had to bond for. Yeah, and, and how it follows the property. So when there is an owner, it either has to be negotiated out with the city or um, continues with the new property. So that, so just because the the first project may not be successful, it still follows that property. So Absolutely, I think a lot yeah. of folks might not might not understand that part as well. Um, yeah, so we're really excited to have Verbio in the community. I think um, they have a, a proven uh, method that they use already throughout Europe. Um, for the cellulosic natural gas, and I think um, it'll be a, a great thing for the community. I think they, they plan to do more than that, too, so um, we're excited to have a new business partner in town. Absolutely. They've got future plans and expansions, so um, they've got a couple phases that you'll probably see uh, some construction starting this summer, so I uh, hope to be operational uh, first quarter of 2020. Yep, so so watch for that. I saw they already have, have a, um, at least a temporary sign-up out there. Yep. So. 
good to see some progress. Um, the next thing we want to talk about is the other major economic driver for the community in 2018, um, which is one of the largest projects in Nevada's history and obviously took a lot of city staff time as well. Um, pretty big deal, you know, the governor came in for a big event um, out at Burke um, and, and just a company that's been part of the fabric of this community for a really long time that started as a family business and continues to be um, our major employer. It was really great to see this project to fruition. So I'll again ask Matt to talk a little bit about what the city did for that and what it means for the community. This was an outstanding opportunity for the city of Nevada uh, for many years to come. Burke has been a, a stable employer in our community for many years and um, one of the largest employees, uh, employers in, in our community. So um, they came to us um, about a year ago and started talking about this opportunity to maybe expand their plant into some property that they own uh, to the north of their current facility. And uh, we started working and um, quite frankly, a lot of issues that the city had to work through. Um, wastewater was the big one. And uh, we got a partnership with Ames uh, that really gave us the capability to land this, the, this project. So uh, it's 210 square, or 210,000 square feet. Uh, it's about $150 million investment in the community. Um, it's gonna create about 210 jobs. So uh, to add it to their current 350 jobs, that's, that's, a, that's a really good employer for uh, Nevada. Um, their have their uh, Hormel is their uh, parent company, and uh, they've been great to work with. Uh, we've got some uh, well, construction's already started, but through the permitting process, they were very open and honest about you know what their goals were and trying to reach those. So um, there were some days that uh, I think we all kind of had to come together as a team, but uh, in our cooperation with the city of Ames to take that wastewater load until mm -hmm. we get our new facility. Uh, this probably wouldn't have come to Nevada, so uh, hats off to the City of Ames and the partnership within Story County uh, to make this really happen. So, great project for Story County. Yeah, and I want to echo that, just the partnerships that came through were very striking to me. Um, proactive partnerships and the fact that um, the City of Ames City Council unanimously agreed to, su to support this project. Um, basically, um, what they agreed to do was uh, we weren't sure if our current wastewater plant in between now and when the new one comes online in a few years would be able to take um, all the, the load from, from Burke. We think that it can, but in case it didn't, we needed that, that release valve. And the city of Ames being willing to do that for us in the transition definitely made the project happen, which def helps the whole county. Ames will benefit too. They'll get folks that'll, that'll shop over there and work over there. And so everybody putting on that big picture um, vision was important to make that come through. Absolutely, we'll grow. Uh, I've said for a long time, uh, in, the, in the past two years that I've been here and I've been working with uh, the NEDC and the Ames Economic Development, uh, well, we benefit here in Nevada and the city of Ames also benefits as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the proximity and uh, everything that they have to offer as well as what we have to offer here in our own local community. So a uh, great partnership and quite frankly, uh, really one that isn't really heard of in a lot of cities. Mm -hmm. So yep. really worked well. And RAGBRAI, um, one of the fun things from last year, and it had been about 10 years since RAGBRAI had come through before. Um, good showcase to the community, and I, it was, I think, a fun day all around and got a lot of great feedback from, from the bikers and um, got me out of my comfort zone a little bit because I showed up and Sean Cole said, there's a microphone, we want you to greet riders into town. So I um, got, got, took pictures with hundreds of people and got to meet people from city councils from all the way to Alaska. So it was kind of cool to meet people from all over the world coming right here to Nevada and show them what's great about the town. So I know the city was um, very supportive of that effort. And so maybe Matt can chime in a little bit about, about his perspective from that day. Yeah, we had a group uh, of volunteers that really uh, really took this project on. Uh, Councilman Nelson and, uh, or Nielsen and uh, Sean Cole, our planning and zoning administrator, really were adamant about putting on a show that uh, to showcase Nevada um, our firefighters uh, had, a, had a really good showing down at their building as well that were on the route. So um, our downtown community uh, really, uh, really put on a positive attitude. And I think, quite frankly, there was um, a great showing, about 20,000 riders, we think, that came through. And uh, what a beautiful day we had for mm -hmm. this, uh, for this uh, event. It was just absolutely gorgeous. Um, George's Pizza uh, was serving pizza, I know, and um, just absolutely uh, what a great day to showcase our community yeah, and it was great to hear so many rave reviews from people who've been through the communities previous on the route about how nice of a job everybody did so yeah. great for everyone to come together 
Um, one of the other items was the capstone, um, Revision 2020 capstone project. So we've been talking about that for a couple years now and a couple of the projects, major pieces that came into place last year um, being the high school baseball project. So um, I know people have seen a lot of the work out there, but Matt can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I've joked all summer long we've been in a rain delay because we really had uh, we really had a wet season, but uh, the project is progressing. Uh, it'll be done in the spring. Uh, the The plans are to at least let the high school uh, seniors get to play a game out there or two. Um, we're hoping it could be done sometime in May. So, um, great project, a great partnership again with the school. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, there was certain segments that each uh, each organization was responsible for, but. Uh, quite frankly, without the other, uh, this project doesn't come together. So uh, a great showcase of what we can do when two organizations mm -hmm. really work together. And um, as as I understood it, the historical part of Score Park had left that area for the high school baseball field years and years ago. And, um, you know, the Billy Sunday field is, is kind of in that low area, and there's been seasons where they couldn't play a game. So uh, moving it out to that facility, uh, I think, will just be a, an added benefit. Uh, not only to just the facility, but safety uh, at Score Park is much better than it was down at Billy Sunday Field. And um, the baseball program is kind of on the upswing right now, so we can hope that uh, we'll be able to showcase that sometime down the road in, a, in a, some kind of sectional or district play. So, yeah. and, and I want to go back to the partnerships again, because it was another good showcase of that. And just working together with the school where everybody had the big picture vision you know, these are the same taxpayers that we're all serving, the same community members we're all serving. So to nickel and dime each other on the small details with really small beans when, it, when you come to a project of that magnitude. So it's great to see everybody um, put, put on that big picture vision. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I know that uh, there was some discussion out there about we kind of maybe underestimated the expense of that project, but as we really got into it, um, we're a little bit over budget and I realized that, but at the same time, I think both organizations are in a financial position to, to take on that little extra debt that we have and, and really do it once and do it right, kind of the motto is what kind of I have had from the beginning. Uh, in the end, we'll have a really nice product to mm -hmm. showcase um, with hopefully what else is to come with the park as well. Yeah, and that leads us into the next part. Matt, Matt hit it up there for us. So the one piece of that um, that's, that's still, one of the pieces of that caps in 2020 that's still remaining is recreation center slash field house or whatever terminology we want to call it, that um, kind of got put on the back burner through 2018 because of all the, uh, with DuPont happening and those types of things, we wanted to really figure out where the city is on a financial basis going forward before committing to another major project. So now that that's wrapping up, I think we're ready to look at that again. And um, I, maybe Matt can talk a little bit about where that project is, because I know we get a lot of questions about that. Absolutely. This is where that minimum assessment agreement really comes in because we, we had the speculation that that was gonna go away. And when you take away that minimum assessment agreement, that reduces our taxes. So uh, we wanted to err on the, on the side of caution when we were getting ready to propose this. Um, we were ready to go back in about 2000, into 2017, uh, we were ready to go forward with the project. And when we got the notice from DuPont about them closing the, the operations out there, we really kind of took a step back and we wanted to make sure that if we're gonna build this thing, let's make sure that we can fund it. And, uh, we're to that point. Uh, we've restarted um, our thought process again on planning uh, what we uh, what we'd like to see at Score Park, and uh, really fit into those services that we feel as a city that we could help our programming as far as uh, youth. And we haven't really touched on the adult stuff yet. So I mean, there's a a lot of programs that I think, quite frankly, that we'll be able to offer uh, in coalition with uh, Ames uh, Park and Recreation as well. We've had discussions with them about uh, some. Uh, what would you say, maybe some competitive uh, type league. Yeah. So uh, that'll be a good thing for us, um, not only for the adults, but for our youth programs. That uh, that practicing super, super late at night or early in the morning hopefully will go away with, yeah. with our new facility. So um, I suspect that uh, 2018 or 2019 will be the year that we really put this thing together and start moving it forward. Yep. So stay tuned, there'll be more coming on that. Um, one of the other great expansions economically in 2018 uh, was Mid-States Millwright and the Mid-States Companies, another homegrown success story um, that we're really proud of and they're, they're now up and operational in a beautiful new facility. So um, Matt again can tell us a little bit about yeah, that great, process. Great project for us. Um, uh, Kevin and Shelly Veer uh, started in 2002 uh, and they've just expanded, they've really grown. 
Um, they're up to about 60 employees. Uh, they're going to expand their new facility to about 3,400 square feet. Uh, matter of fact, I heard just uh, last week that that thing is just about done and ready for operation. So uh, they plan on uh, getting that up and running here in the next within the next month and getting it staffed. So that's about 13 new jobs to our community, which is always a plus. Um, you know, there's uh, there's a success story there to see that a local company uh, chose to stay in Nevada mm -hmm. and expand in Nevada. Uh, and if you look at that piece of property they have, there's room for growth. So uh, we cross our fingers that maybe they'll put another addition out there at yep. some point. They are, they are growing leaps and bounds, and it's good to see. Yep, very good to see. Um, and leads us into the last thing we're going to talk about, which is also the probably the project that's been floating out there the longest. Because when um, about 10 years ago, when I or over 10 years ago now, when I came to town, um, downtown at the pharmacy, one of the first things I heard about was, oh, they're going to tear up that Main Street downtown. And so... One of those things I've been dreading for a while, but also very much um, working in one of those old buildings, understand the importance of um, getting all the new pipe or all the pipes up and out and replaced that are 100 years old and um, the infrastructure that's decaying. So the Central Business District project will be probably one of the most transformative um, and intense projects the city's undertaken, at least in anybody's knowledge. And so the planning process started last year. Um, and probably even before that, but really started forming committees and stuff throughout the last year. And um, we'll be continuing planning through 19 for a project next year. So being very proactive because we know it's gonna affect a lot of people um, and we wanna get it right. And then also we wanna minimize the negative impacts to the businesses downtown because obviously they're very, very important. So we want to make sure it's done in a way that um, is proactive and minimizes any pain that they may see from it. Yeah, and that's the big focus. So we've had uh, several meetings behind the scenes with. Uh, city engineering and uh, trying to come up with the best method, if you will, to really put this project in play. Um, we're currently at the uh, planning stages right now. Um, we had a, a hosted a, uh, a meeting with all the property owners last fall and just kind of gave them a heads up as to what's coming. Uh, the overall project, uh, we hope uh, sometime uh, spring or early summer to come out with really kind of another rendition, if you will, of a plan on uh, what the project's really gonna look like, uh, more of a uh, almost final sketch, but not quite, because there'll still be some, some time for some community, community input. But what we're looking at really is completely redoing the uh, water lines, the sewer lines, um, improving our uh, water runoff from the streets. Uh, and quite frankly, it'll be building to building as we know it right now, getting torn up. and. Yes, it's going to be a headache for some of those property owners. We get that. We're trying to minimize that as best we can and, and stage this project out. But uh, in the end, there's some really bad infrastructure under that main street that uh, several property owners are fighting to keep their sewer lines open and running. And that's never fun to, to be a business owner and have to do that. So um, all in all, the project's going to probably start uh, in the spring of 2020. Uh, probably go into 2021, the spring of 2021, as well into the summer. Um, it's about an eight and a half million dollar project, so that's a very large street project mm -hmm. for what we normally do. Uh, so there'll be some hiccups, I'm sure, along the way, but the overall goal is to really just minimize um, the disruption in service to our local businesses, because that's the most important thing, and trying to keep that uh, access to the building either on the front or to the back. So yeah. that'll be a work in progress, but. Uh, overall goal is to try and minimize that and and at the end of the day it's going to look so much better that uh, it'll be a nice project when it's done. Yeah. Crossing our fingers we won't have too many surprises under the ground there. I'm sure that. there will be some but um, really excited for what, what it's going to look like and be like at, at the end. I think we'll have a downtown that'll be nice and ready to flourish for the next you know 50 to 100 years once, once we take care of the infrastructure that's decaying there and get it all, all up to modern standards. So with that, that's a lot of what we've been working on. I'm sure there's more coming in 2019 we don't even know about yet. So excited to tackle some new challenges and keep moving forward. There'll be a lot in 19, but uh, we'll work through them and yeah. do the best we can. Yeah. Well, have a good night, everybody. If you, As usual, if you have questions or comments or concerns, please reach out to us. Um, we're happy to address those. Thank you very much, and thanks for listening. Have a good evening.